assembled in their appropriate spots. Do we know who was the first one to acquire the setting? I mean, who, yes, who, who do we want to let go first? That was us. Uh, we we have a motion for sanctions that we had set several weeks ago. Okay, and that is in regard jurisdictional discovery. Your Honor, again, just to let the court know the sequence, uh, we filed a motion to reconsider, and then three days later they filed their motion for sanctions. In the meantime, we consulted with Savannah about getting the setting on the motion to reconsider, and Savannah said presented to you on a Monday hearing that never happened. So, the, in, in, in order of filing, it was the motion for sanctions for I mean, the motion to reconsider first. It, he actually was the first to obtain a setting from, uh, from the court coordinator. So, the motion for sanctions regarding the jurisdictional discovery is it in regarding or in reference to? The deposition they want me to reconsider or no your honor <clears throat> well i just didn't i know something may have gotten filed first but typically we'll just give the party deference that got the setting first i understand you you're going to present something at a hearing that did not occur i don't I can't remember why it didn't occur but so but you just reset then that same motion for today no, you're not. Perfect. Yeah, that same motion is set for today. The motion, I'm, I'm sorry, the, at the last hearing, uh, we asked for a setting on our motion to reconsider. And the court said, well, why don't we take that up also on the 22nd? Okay. But, but it was not set at that time. Uh, That's true. In, in fairness, we've been down here week after week <clears> on their various <throat> motions. Uh, this is a motion that we filed, we got set, and um, I would ask the court that we be allowed to go first. Okay, so is that the only motion, though, that you have on file? Yes. Okay, and then, Mr. Jefferson, then you've got the motion to reconsider. That's correct. And in addition to that, we have the a deposition. Motion, motion to quash the deposition. We filed the motion to reconsider the order granting the deposition. Uh, subsequent to that, we had a brief conference with counsel where we advised them that we, were, we would be filing a motion to reconsider. They asked for dates for Mr. Miscavige's deposition. We said we were unwilling to provide dates until so the court considered the motion to reconsider. The, uh, they didn't notice the... the you know, what would be the distinction between the motion to reconsider and the motion to quash? Well, that's where I'm getting to. After we said we weren't, we, we were unwilling to provide dates, they noticed the deposition for January 29th. Uh, one week from today in my office in San Antonio. We then <coughs> filed a motion to quash, which automatically quashes that deposition. They then set that motion to quash for today. And, and just so the court knows, I also filed a motion to quash because they didn't confer, I think, with any other counsel besides maybe Mr. Jefferson. And I have a trial seat in Bear County that's set for next week, so I filed a motion to quash. On those motions, do we have anything else ultimately to try to reach today? No, Your Honor. I think that's it. Yeah. You know, I would point out that the, the motion for sanction is a motion against three parties, my two clients and uh, Church of Scientology International Representative of the Mississippi. Your Honor, I have a uh, just an extra copy for the court of the motion for sanctions. In the event that something comes up, you need to refer to. May I approach? Okay, you may. So why don't I just give each one of you about three minutes to open, so that then uh, we can just take a short recess to allow the media to <coughs> be able to pack up, and then beyond the openings. Anybody, media is welcome to remain, but just electronics behind the rail just need to be turned off. And uh, we'll go from there. But uh, good morning, Mr. Sadio. We haven't let you speak yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
<coughs> and I, I've got a cough and I'm losing my voice. We'd be happy to, to hear it, maybe. Uh, Your Honor, if you're going to proceed on the motion for uh, sanctions, uh, I have a procedural uh, challenge. Uh, it's the okay, well, let me. Space. Okay, well, I want to take that up first. That's all I want to say. Okay, well, let's, let me let you go ahead and open. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> I'll give just a tiny bit of background and then that would be a good breaking point if, uh, since you want to break after a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> first of all, just to orient the court since we've had a variety of different issues that you've had to hear to date, uh, what we're here about is a motion for sanctions on jurisdictional discovery. The last hearing you dealt with the issue of some discovery in relation to the anti slap motions that's not involved in this hearing today um, the as you know uh, the defendants rtc and david miscavige have moved to have uh, mrs rathbun's case dismissed because they say that this court has no jurisdiction over either rtc or uh, captain miscavige um, so they filed a special appearance and, and uh, uh, attempted to have it heard very quickly. Uh, our response to their special appearance is that they do in fact have contacts with Texas sufficient to confer either general jurisdiction, uh, their general contacts with the state, or specific jurisdiction, and that is their specific contacts with this lawsuit that we're here about. Uh, we asked the court to allow us to do some jurisdictional discovery, which the rules allow for, and to put off the special appearance hearing. The court agreed and allowed us to do some discovery. And you'll recall uh, that you suggested at that time, I think a very prudent approach, uh, you suggested that we use a process we called incremental discovery and you had us go out and agree on some discovery we could do without any fighting, uh, and then if we needed more discovery, we would come back to you. And that discovery that we agreed to do on an incremental basis, and all three of these defendants agreed to do it, uh, was some specified depositions, and then we had sent, in this work, this is going all the way back to September, we had sent uh, to each one of the three defendants a set of 45 jurisdictional requests for production. They weren't general requests for production on the merits and that sort of thing. They were tailored to the issue of jurisdiction. If you look at them, Your Honor, they're very comprehensive and they're all specifically about the specially appearing defendants' contacts with the state of Texas. So. Um, we have now for four months been attempting to get documents produced in response to our discovery. So we had the initial set of uh, 45 requests for production each. They were to respond to those. Of course, they also have the right to object. They were to respond or object to the discovery requests. And what they did was they then came back and said, oh, well, we need a protective order to protect confidential information. And we had wrangling around over that, and we finally got a protective order in place. So then- It was agreed, ultimately, correct? Yes. No, there's no fighting uh, before you on, on that, Your Honor. And so um, they came back, and Captain Miscavige, his response was, none, 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 none. No objections, no anything, just none. Uh, taking the position that he, from his exalted position, actually has no documents. Uh, CSI and RTC both responded with copious objections and produced nothing. Uh, they then, once we got the protective order in place, they produced finally some, some documents, having basically nothing to do with the contacts between RTC, Miscavige, and the state of Texas. So, um, uh, also of interest, to date, they have never stamped one thing as confidential <coughs> after the whole fall draw over uh, confidentiality and a protective order. Um, so, so they 
produce some stuff, their corporate documents. It's basically if you if you had want, made a list of what they wanted us to see, that's what they gave us. Um, so in spite of that, what we consider to be inadequate document production, we went forward with the agreed depositions, and we took the depositions. After the depositions, I promptly sent an email request to both groups of defendants, CSI and then uh, Miscavige and RTC. And I said, please supplement your discovery responses. And here are the things in particular that we're interested in at this time. <clears throat> they then responded, and even though everything I asked for would be covered within the broad set that we had sent, they responded with a bunch of objections, produced nothing, and in fact, a number of their objections were, you've never asked for this before, even though the initial requests were broad enough, certainly, to include that. And, and when, when I get into my actual presentation, okay, I'll we'll show the wrap up that. in about a minute. We've gone from three to about almost six. Okay, Your Honor, I'm, I'm just about done, if I could wrap up. So um, they produced no documents at that time. And then, um, but they did set their special appearance for hearing again. So we had to come down here and ask. We filed a motion to compel, and we asked for some more time to get that discovery done. Uh, at that time, they said, well, they hadn't, you know, there was some question over were the requests that I sent, the, the later specific request included when, within the previous ones. And the court finally said, look, just he's asked you for them now. Give them a clear response. They responded and gave us nothing. So that's, that's uh, about where we are, and I'll sit down, and I, I want to go through some of the, the specific items of inadequate discovery uh, when we resume. Okay. Mr. Cedillo, you had a procedural matter you wanted to get? Yes, Your Honor. May I hand the court our notebook with our response and some uh, authority? Yes, sir. <coughs> Judge, I have, a, I have a shot clock app. If you want to turn it on three minutes, we'll have a budget go off. Uh, the procedural, no, no, the procedural uh, uh, defect, Your Honor, is, is as follows. Uh, in the materials I've handed you, there's a case of Ball versus Roa, R-A-O. That stands for the proposition, Your Honor, that court can't grant sanctions under a statute or a rule that is not identified in the motion. Uh, that is in keeping with a long line of cases, and the fact of the matter is that the motion for sanctions that's being brought does not specifically identify a court order, a statute, or a rule that we, the defendants, I'm speaking for CSI, but I think I speak for all of them, doesn't identify anything that we have specifically violated, uh, which they need uh, in, in order to come forward with a motion for sanctions. Uh, on that basis alone, Your Honor, th this, this sanctions hearing uh, should last about the, the, the length of time you gave it for the opening. Uh, in addition, uh, if you look at uh, Rule uh, 215 of the Texas Rules of Procedure, uh, they're in direct violation of Rule 215, which prohibits a discovery party from applying for sanctions uh, in a discovery dispute without first obtaining a court order compelling the production. There's been no order by this court or any other compelling us to produce something. And under the discovery process, and I've, I've included Rule 215 in my notebook for the court's ease of reference, you need to show that, uh, that there was an order uh, uh, compelling me to produce something before you can hold me for sanctions uh, for violating that order. And, and they skip that step entirely. So for that reason, this, this whole entire uh, sanctions hearing uh, shouldn't go forward. They, 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 they can't show that I failed to comply uh, with any order when no order uh, exists, Your Honor. There's three very narrow exceptions uh, to what I'm saying about Rule 215. Uh, they're, they're there in the rule. I won't go over them in my opening because uh, it probably use up my three minutes. But I will tell the court that none of those three uh, exceptions apply none of those circumstances apply. <clears throat> and then, Your Honor, to finish my opening and to give you the proper context, uh, uh, 
this is the procedural history of this discovery dispute that they want to impose sanctions on us, okay? On November the 1st of, of last year, uh, the defendant that I represent, CSI, we served our second amended responses, objections, and answers to the request of production uh, that Mr. Jeffrey just told you about was, was in contention here, okay? Uh, I, most of, of, of his requests, Your Honor, go way beyond the jurisdictional uh, uh, discovery that you allowed. Uh, they're overly broad, and what we did, we objected to their broadness, to the fact that they're not reasonably limited in time. They weren't even reasonably limited to, to geography, to Texas. As an example, Your Honor, I call the court's attention to their request for protection number two. This is, this is what they asked us for that drew the objection. They asked for any and all documents referring in any way to plaintiff's husband, Mark Marty Rapid, period. No reference to Texas, no limit as to time, anything. Classic definition of fishing expedition. Okay, we disagree. They think it's a very valid and broad deal. What do the rules say we're supposed to do with it? Exactly what we did with it, Your Honor. We lodged proper objections. We're allowed by the Texas Rules of Procedure to lodge those objections. Without waiving any objections, we did produce some responsive documents, even though we lodged the objection to their breadth and, and their unreasonableness. We never thereafter, Your Honor, and this is critical for the application of, you know, you've got better things to do than have us come running to you with discovery disputes. Not only the rules, but the Texas Lawyers Creed says that we're supposed to confer, we're supposed to work out any differences, we're supposed to attempt to before we come running to you asking for sanctions. That's not what they did. What they did, they never sought any ruling from you we communicated, we never received any communication from them to discuss any of our responses, any of our objections, and importantly, Your Honor, we filed a privilege law backing up our objections. We've never had any uh, 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 approach by them to discuss the objections or the privilege law. Not to this date. They've done nothing to seek a ruling from you on the objection, which they're supposed to do under the rules. But what we get is a bunch of objections and a lot of media play and a lot of blogging and another event for the cameras to come in here so that they can get another sound bite out in the press. But that's all that's going on here, Your Honor. They want to create a circus that is absolutely ignoring the proper way we're supposed to conduct discovery. We have the right to file the objections, the rules, the lawyer's creed, everything, including the disciplinary rules where you're not supposed to file a motion for sanctions to get an advantage in a civil case or, or, or threaten criminal proceedings to get an advantage in a civil case. And that's what they've attempted to do with their motion for sanctions. They're asking you to refer this matter for three individuals to the district attorney to seek criminal prosecution. That violates the rules of professional responsibility. It violates the lawyer's creed. They didn't follow Rule 215. They're not compliant with the authorities uh, under uh, Bell, uh, Ball versus Roa. Uh, this, this thing shouldn't proceed any further than that, Your Honor. That's my opinion. Well, may I respond on the pure procedural point? Your Honor, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get into that okay. later, but let me just let everybody make a fair I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, Your Honor, as Mr. Steele pointed out, there are rules that govern discovery. They're entitled to send us discovery. We then respond to the discovery. There's, it's commonplace that responses include objections. Our responses did indeed include objections. They've not never, although we disagree, we say our objections are good. They say they're bad. When you have a disagreement, what's the, what do you do about it? You come to court and you ask for a ruling. They've not done that. This motion is a transparent attempt, Your Honor. It, it, there's, there's no backing for them. For the motion. I want to point out just a couple of things that they're asking for that they want us to produce and that they're asking for as part of the sanctions that they say we're, we're, we're owed to them. First, all travel records of David Miscavige over the last 25 years, anywhere, not in Texas, anywhere in the world, all travel records of Mr. Miscavige for the last 25 years, all phone records of every kind for communications to or from David Miscavige 
Warren McShane, Laurie Simley Smith, Tommy Davis, Alan Cartwright, Linda Hamill, Neil O'Reilly, and Angie Blankenship. From January 1st, 2007 to August 15th, 2013, the day they filed this lawsuit. And yes, we filed an objection to that request saying that it's ridiculous. They're asking for every single phone record from each of these individuals for a seven year period, regardless of where or to whom or the subject matter or anything else. They asked for all text message records of every kind for communications to or from those same individuals for that same time period, from 2007 until 2013. And they're saying we should be sanctioned because we have not produced all text messages from all of these individuals for that entire period of time, regardless of subject matter, regardless of whether it has any connection at all with the state of Texas. They asked the same thing for email records. They asked the same thing, Your Honor, for orders and compliance reports to or from David Miscavige, all these individuals for that same time period. Not orders or compliance reports dealing with Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Rathbun, any orders or compliance reports. They have asked, Your Honor, for overbroad discovery. We, as our right and our duty to do as lawyers for our clients, lodged appropriate objections. And now we find ourselves having to come to court and defend against a motion for sanctions. I, I, I don't have nothing else to say. Okay. Thank you. Well, let's just take about uh, three or four, five minutes and let any uh, cameras get an opportunity to get outside the courtroom and uh, any other electronics behind the rail just need to be shut down. Media, alternatively, though, is welcome to use pen and paper, etc. 